Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. And on today's episode, Andrew and I, we're going to talk all about kicking and some of the things that have come out of kicking, things we've been working on individually, things we've talked about together, and how some of those things have coalesced into a new program offering. So stick around. If you're new, I would suggest you start at whistlekick.com. It's the place where we have links and offerings that abound, all sorts of things over there at whistlekick.com, our online home, including our store, and references to things like Marshall Journal that we exclusively sponsor, as well as a bunch of other stuff. So if you haven't been over there in a few weeks, you probably should check it out. We're adding stuff truly all the time. I'm in there at least once a week making updates. Now, one of the things that you'll find there is the link to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, where we keep everything related to this show, Martial Arts Radio, the top-ranked traditional martial arts podcast in the world. We're super proud of that. We continue to put a lot of time in making sure that the things that we do here on the show support Whistlekick's grand mission to connect, educate, and entertain, all on the path to getting everyone in the world to train for at least six months. If you want to support us, you can do all sorts of things. You could buy something in the store at whistlekick.com, like... Uh, my hoodie or a variation of Andrew's hoodie and use the code podcast15. It's going to save you 15%. You could share an episode. You could tell a friend. You could join our Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash whistlekick. That's where you go. It starts at two bucks a month. You get behind the scenes and it goes up for the, from there. And as you add additional dollars to your monthly contribution, we give you all kinds of cool stuff back from stickers and shirts to bonus episodes and join the school owners mastermind books lots of cool stuff so check that out and if you want the entire list all the things you can do to help us out in our mission as whistlekick go to the family page whistlekick.com slash family you got to type it in it's updated at least weekly and there's some good stuff in there most of you won't go and that's okay but for those of you who do you understand andrew hey jeremy how's it going we're I'm I'm great. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Hey, I was thinking about the Patreon because you know I lifted up the sign. Because you have that sign that you yeah, held up. That that is at least a year old at this point. But is it really? Uh, yeah, I think so for sure. Um, Jeremy, you're a cool guy. Thanks. You're a cool guy. I'd like to think Thanks. I'm a cool guy too. You are. Sometimes Absolutely. I just want to buy my friend a cup of coffee. You're like, how cool would it be? Hey, you know, Jeremy, I'm going to buy you a cup of coffee today. How Thanks. much is a cup of coffee these days? I don't know. Depending on where you go, anywhere from 2 to $10. Buy me a cup of coffee once a month. That's what I'm saying. That's all. That's all. Buy me a cup of coffee. I, I continue to maintain that if you enjoy this show, there is no better value in terms of what you pay, which, let's face it, is zero to what you get. But then when you step up on the Patreon, it's, you know, if you factor in all that you get for say $5 a month, it's incredible. Yep. $5 a month. You're buying me a beer. Buy me a beer once a month. Thanks. Buy Andrew a beer. That's my new, that's will be my new catchphrase. Hi, I'm Andrew. Buy me a beer. Anyway, I'm great, Jeremy. Uh, it's a good You're gonna day. You're going to walk around with a cardboard sign. <laughs> Hi, I'm Andrew. Buy me a beer. <laughs> Are you... Are you unhoused? No, I just would like people to buy me a beer. I just like beer. You know, the unfortunate part is, is that would probably receive more attention. It might. Yeah, you're right. You know what? I'll because try it and I'll let you know. You let me know. So, uh, yeah, I'm good though. Uh, life, life is good. Um, looking forward to sitting down here and chatting about yeah. kicking, which I've been doing a lot of lately. You, you have, and I think we should let the audience know because, um, if you've been around, if anybody's been around for a while, they know that when we roll out a new thing, we generally do an episode about it. And and spoiler alert, there is a new thing related to kicking. We have a kicking focused program. But again, as people who have been around for a while know, when we do these episodes, it's not just a commercial. We give you behind the scenes, which some people find interesting, but we also give you essentially the tools if you want to make your own. When we did the the strength program and the speed program, we talked about the science and everything so if people want to go and do the research and piece it together for themselves by all means you can do that we're not hiding anything the only thing we're selling and i'll, I'll transition here in a moment is the done for you method. yeah okay 
you've been spending a lot of time kicking because as of this recording in two days, 48 plus seven, right? It's at seven. It's at seven o'clock. Yeah. So 48 plus nine. So in 50, just shy of 57 hours, you will be testing for your Superfoot Black Belt under Bill Wallace. I will. Yep. 57 Which hours. Which is going to... That gets a little... Gonna, makes it a little more real when you say it that way. Cool. Yeah. It's only 57 <laughs> hours away. <laughs> uh, and of course, anybody who knows anything about the, the great Bill Wallace or the organization or has been through that test knows it's all about kicking. It is all about kicking. You have spent a lot of months preparing, doing a lot of kicking. You and I have done some kicking together. We have talked about kicking and that has led to a lot of progress, I think, for both of us. Yep. A lot of thought processes. And I don't know about you, but over the last few months, I've started to look at kicking a little bit differently as I put some things together. How about you? Is kicking a little bit different in your mind than it used to be? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> for sure. It, I mean, I'm, I'm kicking constantly every day at this point, yeah. pretty much. Just to keep up my my endurance and my stamina, and stretch those hips out and stuff. Yeah. Yep. Right on. Well, one of the things that started to kind of come together for me as I was talking to you and we were working on some stuff was the fact that, like most of what we do in martial arts, most of us do simply what we were taught to do. And for a lot of us, not only were we just given here is what you do and here's how you get better, we were taught not necessarily to not question. And I don't mean like, oh, could there be something better? But we just kind of assumed that it was better. So, I mean, there are plenty of schools where you, you don't question, right? Like, but what if training in this way might be? Nope, you don't do that. There's certainly plenty of schools like that. But for a lot of us, we just, you know, when we are still new to something, we tend to do what has been given to us. But as I've spent more and more time kicking and training with great kickers, I've had to modify some things to make things work for myself. Yeah. And it led to a whole bunch of stuff as I realized, wait a second, there are some simpler ways. There are some things that are kind of universal within kicking because let's face it, we don't all do kicks the same and in the same way. Yeah. And I, and I think when you're just starting out, you don't know what questions to ask. Like you are, you just do what you're told without asking questions, mostly because you don't know anything else. So there's no reason for your brain to think about necessarily doing it a different way. Yeah. When we start out, we're happy to throw a kick at the knee without falling over. Right? Like, yeah, I'm not going to ask, well, how do I kick to the head when I can't even kick to the waist? Right? Like, it's, it, there's something kind of natural in there that we don't do that. And it's no secret that one of the things that Whistlekick does to generate revenue is we have some training programs. We've got uh, our strength program and speed, and we've got a couple of flexibility programs. We rolled out the 30 day challenge at the beginning of 2023. We've got a bunch of programs. But following on the heels of the challenge, we rolled out another program called Kick Clinic. Because as I travel around and I'm teaching, I'm finding there are a lot of people who need help with their kicking because a lot of instructors, um, it's not that they don't know how to teach kicking. It's that they have a small bag of tricks. And if those tricks don't work for the, someone they're teaching, they might have a hard time. One of the couple, go ahead. I was going to say one of the best things I learned as a, a teacher, and I'm not talking martial arts. I'm actually talking drumming. But one of the best things I ever learned was that there are multiple ways to teach the mm. same thing. The end result is this. How do I get there? Well, I can go this way, but I can also go this way, and I can go this way, and I'm getting to the same place. But for whatever reason, I may have a student that this way doesn't work for them. And so mm -hmm. 
coming up with different ways to do the same thing, I think as an educator, whether it's martial arts or drumming or social studies, having multiple ways to to teach the same thing, I think is critical. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it shows a better understanding as well. The other component, I think, to this is that most of us recognize that doing something frequently leads to a certain kind of progress. If you want to get more flexible, if you've gone through either of our flexibility programs, you know that in order to get more flexible, you have to work on flexibility every day. The most flexible people are working on flexibility on a daily basis. If you want to become the best kicker you can be, you've got to work on your kicking every day. But most of us aren't going to go to a class every day. We don't have time for that. And rarely do we even have a school that teaches seven days a week that we can go to. And so this is, again, where our, I don't want to say this is the only way we're going to present information moving forward, but right now it's working very well for a lot of people. Daily email, short, in this case, 10 minute workouts, that this program is focused about kicking. And, you know, one of the things that we've talked about as we've talked about Superfoot stuff is the fact that people do things differently. People's kicks are different if they're coming from different schools. Like I would assume there are some expectations of you with your round side hook kick for Superfoot stuff that are different from your traditional karate. Yeah. Yeah, but kicking is one of those things that, with rare exceptions, kicking you're going to find in nearly every martial art. <clears throat> Not every, but I think nope. it would be safe to say a, a vast majority are going to have kicks. Um, but you're right. Stylistically, <clears throat> instructors may have certain, you know, in our school we do them this way, but in the superfoot system we do them slightly differently. So yeah, there are there are certainly different ways to do the same kick. And that's where um, we have one of our biggest challenges is whistle kick because we are style agnostic. And mm-hmm. if anybody's fairly new and they're not quite sure of that term, that means that we work really hard to not say we are a karate company, even though there are plenty of people that use karate as a generic term. We don't, you know, we're not a Taekwondo company. We're a martial arts company. Yeah. And thus the content that we put out is meant to be as applicable to as many people as possible. So what are those common elements that make you a better kicker, being stronger, better balance, better speed, better flexibility, better accuracy? Yep. Those are the five main ones that are addressed in Kick Clinic. Yeah, because it doesn't matter what... Okay. Back up, Andrew. Regardless of how you are kicking... I think I know where you're going. um, It doesn't matter whether you are kicking the knee or whether you're kicking the head. You have to lift up your leg. That's the fact. It doesn't matter regardless of where the the, the end result is, is, the target is. There are things that are universal about kicks regardless and that that's what this program goes after it it was designed to help anyone become a better kicker regardless of their style or their rank time training personal limitations goals etc because let's face it we could all be better kickers right um anybody who has had the the ability the uh, honor of training with bill wallace uh and really had a conversation with him he's still working on stuff he's still training He's not just kind of floating through. He's putting a lot of time in. And so if that man, who is often recognized as the best kicker of all time, has things he can work on, so can all the rest of us. Yeah. he can. I will say, he can say he's still working on his kicks, but it looks phenomenal to me. I don't think he has anything to work on. <laughs> well... Have, have have a chat with him after your test and, and he'll he'll tell you he will focus on on the things that he's not happy about with himself he's a very he has very high standards he's very critical of himself and it's part of why he's so great because he never settles oh 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 never settle <laughs> um so let's let's talk about specifically how how we address those five things and we can talk about some of the drills that you've been using and 
how they kind of correlate in. Now, what, when, when you started working on things, I gave you, there was one drill I told you. I said, if you do nothing else, do this yep. because it's going gonna, it's gonna to help your flexibility. It's going to help your conditioning. It's going to help muscle endurance slash strength, not so much speed. But those big three, the three that people have the hardest time with, you know, being able to keep their keg leg up and kick. Uh, tell everybody about that drill that I gave you. So the other added benefit, I will t say the <clears throat> say the drill, but it also is uh, working to keep my hips uh, less tired as well. Mm. But the drill yep. is essentially, in in a nutshell, lifting your leg and just kicking, just lifting your leg and just going. And so in my basement, uh, I've got, like a lot of people do in their basements, metal posts holding up part of the house. And so, and I have- That's one. how you know it's a good place to train because there's a pole in the middle of the floor. That's right. It's true. You're right. So right outside my office door, there is one. And so a few times throughout the day, I will just hold onto this pole, lift up my leg and just kick round side hook hook side side different levels just kick and just the leg is just constantly is there is there force and power in each of these kicks no but i'm keeping that minimal leg, very minimal yeah i'm keeping that leg elevated and raised and constantly throwing it out different heights different kicks and just going for as much as i can and i will do that a couple times a day yep and you're, how long are you doing it when you're doing it? Well, when I first started, uh, it was like, well, so it varied. I, for a while, I was counting kicks. I was like, oh, I can do like 35. When I started, like 35 kicks, and then my hip would start to like, mm, that's not so great. Uh, and then it got harder to count. So I just started going with a timer. Uh, and so at this point, I'm up to like two-ish minutes or so. That's awesome. Um and make no mistake, like after the two minutes, like I'm like, oof, like this, I'm a little sore. But at first it was like 30 seconds. Yeah. And I would start to get sore and, and I would put my foot down and I, you know, stretch it out a little bit and I'd go about the rest of my day. Uh, and, you know, later on the day I'd try it again. And now I'm up to about two, two and a half minutes or so. No, not two, now, I, two, two, two minutes. I, I, I would call that somewhere between a, a, um, mid-level and advanced drill, right? It's not something I'm going to have a beginner do generally because it, they can be reinforcing uh, poor movement patterns, poor kicking patterns. But for what it's designed to be, it's a great drill. Yeah. And that's one of the things that was important in Kick Clinic was, you know, with all of our programs, I'm trying to make them as valuable to as many different kinds of people as possible. Yeah. You know, if you're... If you've been training for six months, you're probably going to find value in kick clinic. And we don't, it's not just dumping a bunch of stuff on people. It's, it's breaking it out. It's okay. Here we got 10 minutes. I got to get you warmed up. I got to get you some flexibility. I got to get you some accuracy. And a lot of times I'm coming up with drills. I'm not saying they don't exist elsewhere, but uh, here's one that was important for me. I wanted to work accuracy because I've never seen anybody's, kick training, working accuracy. Mm. Yeah, that's a and, good, really good point. And when when we develop new range of motion and we get faster and we get stronger, you've probably seen this in mid ranks where, you know, they can kick above their head all of a sudden, but they can't do it when and where they want to. If they're sparring, you know, they, they aim for the chest and they kick somebody in the face or they aim for the head and they kick way over the head because they're just, you know, they're, they're kind of like, like a newborn calf, right? Yeah, like they're, they're still those legs. Mm -hmm. How do those legs work yep. in that moment? Yep. And so, you know, I'll give you this one. That's right out of the program as a, a good example, painter's tape. You know, most of us have some painter's tape around. It's super cheap. It's blue. It contrasts well, it doesn't leave residue. And we've got some drills in there where you put a piece of painter's tape at early in the program, it's knee level. Later, if you can get to it, it's it's hip level. Later, if you can get to it, you bring it up to chest level. And it's about putting your foot with, without power, without speed. Just can you take your toe or your ball of your foot or whatever and touch that piece of tape? 
Yep. And over time it becomes, cool. oh, I can now put my foot where it needs to go. Exactly. We're working on it every day. Yeah, yeah. Can I put it where I need where it needs to go when I need it to go there? Because that's really what matters. How great it how fast your kick is, how strong your kick is, how flexible your legs are really don't matter if you're never able to put it where you want it. Right? The 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 broad term we would use here would include kind of uh, proprioception, the sure. ability to know where your body is in space. And it's something that I think a lot of martial artists only work on in the context of free form movement like sparring. Yeah, yeah, it's a good point. It's one of the <clears throat> one of the reasons why I the heavy bag that I have at home, I have a standing mm. heavy bag wave master and I always make sure that I turn it so it says wave master on the side I'm kicking and I yep. aim at certain spots, you know, like when I'm working certain stuff, I'm aiming for the A and I'm constantly hit, trying to hit the A, but, but yeah, or I'm working on a different technique and I'm maybe I'm, I'm really going for that W because it's way up high, but it gives me something to constantly focus on hitting consistently. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's another component of anyone who's skilled at anything within martial arts is not the only the ability to understand it and to do it in the air, but to apply it with accuracy and appropriate timing. Right. Yeah. If I was to ask you to, you know, and, and I'll answer this for myself after I ask you, what are the pieces about your kicking that you've come to realize, oh, I need more work on this. I mean, we, we talked about the endurance piece and yeah. I, don't, I don't just mean in this lead up to your test in 56 and a half hours, <laughs> um, but more broadly. So I grew up doing karate. I've always been a karate. I mean, I've studied other stuff, but mainly yeah. karate and traditional Okinawan or Japanese karate. And I was always taught that when I'm doing a side kick or a round round kick, that my toes are pointing sideways to the kick. Mm -hmm. And the minute I started turning my foot so it's facing a little more, what I would call to the rear behind me, it opened those your, hips your plant up. foot. Yep, the, that foot that's on the ground, moving it so it's pointing behind me, opened up my hips quite a bit. And so honestly it's remembering to move my bottom foot. You know, mm. I'm used to, you know, if I was standing in like a side fighting stance with both of my heat, both of my feet facing the same direction, when I lift up the lead leg to kick, it's remembering to turn that bottom foot. And I never used to have to do that because the schools I trained in, you didn't do that. Yep. So and, at and this point, it's just, re it's honestly, it's just remembering to do that. The minute I do it, I'm like, oh, this feels a lot better for my hips. But I, I forget to do that sometimes because of just habit. Yeah. One of the things that we include in, I think, all of our training programs at this point, and it's something you and I have talked about on the show quite a bit, is taking notes. Mm -hmm. There's a part at the end where we tell you explicitly, take notes on what you did today. And then we start the next with review your notes. Yep. Because if you go into a training session going, I need to remember to pivot my plant foot. This is a thing I'm working on. Yeah. You're more likely to do it and you're going to get more out of those repetitions, which I know you know that I'm saying that for the audience. <laughs> the biggest thing that I've been working on is I would say connecting kicks in a way that is useful not just aesthetic mm -hmm. so it, it is not a secret i am a smaller man i am five foot seven uh, i have good hip mobility so i you know i tell people spar me like i'm six foot because otherwise i will kick you in the face <laughs> <laughs> you've experienced that i have it's true you can <laughs> um but when it comes to you know sparring I'm not, prior to a few years ago, I would, you know, throw one kick and get out because again, I'm small. Most people's arms are significantly longer than mine. If I land in close, I'm going to get punched and I don't want to do that. So that meant most of my time kicking was, I, I wouldn't say quite tricking. I don't know why I'm using air quotes. 
you know, I, I find that stuff fascinating and I can, I can dabble in, in the jump spin stuff. And, you know, I did a few years of Capoeira and I find that stuff a lot of fun, but that's not really my pursuit. So I've kind of been this odd in the middle part, but the big thing I've been working on, and again, as a member of the Superfoot organization, just as an aside, if anybody, you know, um, not that, that we have any formal relationship beyond our individual relationship with the Superfoot organization, Bill Wallace, you all, there, there's a path for all of you to test and earn rank under Superfoot, if that is of interest. So uh, Superfoot, just find the Superfoot website, it's, all the information's there. Um, I found, oh, wait a second, there's a way to take what I already do with my kicking and make it more versatile. Hmm. And the experience that I had with, you know, the aesthetic elements, you know, high kicks and, and controlled kicks and being able to put my foot where I wanted it to go. Just because I'm throwing a second kick after doesn't mean it has to be an aesthetic combination. There is some utility there, but there are things that have to be done very specifically if it is going to have utility, if it's going to be functional in a um, sparring situation or, mm -hmm. or something along those lines. So that's the big thing I've been working on. And, you know, as I, I think about what's in kick clinic, it's, it's all there. It's all the pieces because it's not a, it's not one or two drills that say, well, here's how you reach that goal that Jeremy has, or that goal that Andrew has, because we don't know what your goals are. Exactly. Everyone's different. But if we puzzle piece together, let's get you stronger. Let's build muscular endurance. Let's get you more flexible. Let's get you better balance. Let's give you some more accuracy. If you put those together, you reach every goal. Yeah. yeah. Or you are supporting reaching every goal. And the feedback that came out of it was was awesome. People were like, holy cow, my kicks are better. People yeah. don't seem to believe that, you know, 10 minutes a day across a month is going to have a big difference. But if I told you, go work on your, go, go, go practice your kicks for five hours. Of course you're going to get better. It's five extra hours. Yep. <clears throat> on top of the other stuff you're doing. And here, here's, here's a question for you because you're, you were talking about the, your hips, you, you called it soreness. I'm going to guess it's more, um, fatigue in yeah. the moment when you're done. Yeah. When you go to class, when you teach or you're training your, your traditional karate classes, are things not easier? Oh, absolutely. No, they absolutely <laughs> are easier. Yeah. Yeah. So as you, as you work these core components of, martial arts, let's call it physical conditioning, fitness, whatever, you get more out of your training. Yeah, absolutely. I, I said it. The first program we rolled out was, um, is now called force at the time. I forget what we called it. Uh, but I said, when we did that episode, stronger people are harder to kill. Yep. Yep. And bigger people are harder to kidnap. They are, they are, uh, there's a, uh, there's another version of that phrase that's a little little less PC that I is funny. And I know you know what it is. And it's all good. just move on. Some <laughs> some some of you out there in the audience may know what. So I, I I think if I have an encouragement for people, if you know, obviously I would love, and I'm assuming I'm speaking for you, Andrew, that you as well would love for people to check out Kick Clinic. It yep. is less expensive than you think it is. Uh, discounts do work on it as with all of the training programs. But if you're not going to do that, if you're not going to, you know, take our version, if you're going to quote, roll your own, as some people would say, and yes, I understand what that is an analogy to think about those five components, strength, endurance, speed, balance, accuracy, flexibility. Well, speed, I guess makes it six, doesn't it? I haven't talked about speed, but yeah. think about those core pieces. As you get better at one of them, try to get better at the others. Yeah. And try to incorporate that into the rest of your training because every, you will get more out of your formal training with others. Yeah. The, I think the thing for people to bear in mind is that kick clinic is not for Taekwondo people. It's not nope. for karate people. It's nope. not for Muay Thai people. Nope. It's for everyone that has kicking involved in their training i would go so far as to say maybe kick clinic is not for boxers but that, 
you know, you, if you're doing BJJ, maybe you don't do Kit Clinic. But I think the argument could be made for doing Kit Clinic will still make you better at movement with your feet. So yeah, even I, that, I, like, but the biggest thing is like, oh, you know, we're not a big kicking school. But does your school do any kicks? Like, it will make you better, period. Yeah, it's, I, I like the way you put that for boxers and, you know, grapplers. Energy comes from a relationship to the ground. Yep. You could think of footwork as kicking. Yep. The principles that make you better at footwork will are the same principles that make you better at kicking and vice versa. It's still that handful of components, strength, balance, endurance, etc. It it all it all works. It all translates through. These are they're all these tied are, together. Yep. If you purchase this program, and I hope some of you do, I hope all of you do, I know. Not all of you will, but for those that do, you'll see, okay, I see what Jeremy's going for here. This makes sense, but you'll get to the end of it after the month and go, this worked more than I expected it to. Yeah. My results were better. That's been the broad feedback on this program is people expected some progress, but they got more than they expected, which <laughs> kind of my business philosophy. Uh, you can find it at whistlekick.com under the programs and training section in the store. You can use the code podcast15 to save 15% on what is already a very affordable program. Go for it. Uh, if you have f people that you want to uh, benefit with this, that you could, this is actually one that's kind of easy to gift in, in the logistics on it, or you could buy a gift certificate and share that with them. Anything else we should say about this before we go? No, no, I think I think we've covered most everything. Okay, all right. Yeah, I'm proud of the training programs, and I hope those of you out there will check them out at whistlekick.com. If you go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, you're going to see the show notes. You're going to find a place to sign up for the newsletter. You're going to find every single episode we have ever done in the history of the show. Plus, there's some bonus stuff over there that if you haven't checked it out, you might not think about, like transcripts. What was that episode that they did three years ago? And I know it had a guy, and he, I'm pretty sure he was from this town, and he did this style. There's a search function. And you can go typey, 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 or tappy, 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 depending on whether you're on a keyboard or a phone. And it'll search the transcripts, and you should be able to find the episode you're looking for. That's why we do the transcripts. You can also consider two other things that might be of value to you. One, you can hire Whistlekick as your martial arts school consulting firm. We have brought on a number of schools. We have more. I have, I just got another school owner reached out for an intro call yesterday. We are doing that next week and we're killing it. It's, it's been a lot of fun watching these schools grow as a result of our methodology. If you've been around for a while, you know what we stand for. We bring the same principles to you for that. And then the other thing you might think about is a seminar. If you have a school or are part of a school and have the ear of your instructor or owner, have us out for a seminar. It could be me, it could be me and Andrew. We could bring more friends. Depends on what the goal is, where you are, logistics and everything. The goal with these is not to make money. It's to reach out to people. We're not trying to lose money, but if we can find a way to cover some costs and, you know, we all get lunch, then hey, let's let's do it. Reach out. Jeremy at whistlekick.com. Andrew is Andrew at Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio.com. Whistlekick social media everywhere is at Whistlekick. And that wraps us up for now. Until next time, train, train hard, hard, smile, smile, have a great and day. Have a great day.